Veeam is one of the more interesting stories we've covered in the past decade. Born in 2006 with a simple premise to make backing up virtualized systems easy, fast, consistent, and cost-effective, the company's timing was perfect as it rode the coattails of the virtualization trend with a laser focus on developing great products that just work, that's the tagline. Fast forward to 2021 and Veeam has surpassed the billion dollar mark in revenues and is transformed into a leading, the leading, the number one independent pure play company for backup and data protection software. The company's expanding its TAM, extending from its on-prem roots into cloud, cloud data backup, containers, and SaaS data protection. And with me to talk about its progress and how it thinks about the future are Bill Largent, who's the CEO and chairman of Veeam and Jim Kruger, the CMO at the company. Gentlemen, welcome, great to see you again. Hey, great to see you again, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, great to be here. Okay, yeah, so great, uh, great introduction, by well, the way. Yeah, I appreciate I, that setup. I've been following you guys for a long time, but you know, you don't sit still. So give us the business update. I mean, you guys are cranking. You just put out a press release on your progress. You're pretty transparent for a private company. We love that, but give us the update, Bill. Yeah, I, thanks very much. Uh, I'll do that. Um, uh, really, we're pretty excited about the press release. We said Q1, how we're 25% up uh, ARR growth. We've made a great transition with our team. Um, super strong on uh, our performance, our economic performance. We like being transparent. We're transparent with uh, clearly our owners, now Insight Venture Partners, and that's been a big transaction that occurred in the last uh, 15, 14 months. And we're, we're uh, transparent with our customers, our partners, our distributors, so and our vendors. So we're just that way. We like to make sure we're good partners with all of those along the line, and we care quite a bit about them. So I think that transparency helps us with our customer base and where we're going with our product and what we've had to offer. We're now over 4,500 um, employees strong uh, around the globe, um, 40 plus countries operating uh, uh, well in all those jurisdictions with uh, the COVID being coming out of, I would say coming out of, hopefully coming out of a, a rough uh, time period uh, from, from the geographical, geopolitical, COVID issues. So we believe we've done extremely well through then. The business has continued to grow for us. So we're really excited about uh, where things are. Insight has done a great job in helping us uh, advance our business and thinking about looking at new TAMs to go after. And um, we're pretty excited about it, so. Well, I'll add 13 consecutive quarters of double digit growth for a company of, of, of your age and size is, is very impressive. You don't see that often. Yeah, we've uh, we work pretty hard at that. It's uh, I'd say we really focus on that year to year, uh, even though our quarters just keep popping along very nicely for us. You know, starting back in 06, having been around since then, we did start at absolute zero. We didn't have a uh, didn't have a bit in the bank at that time. Uh, now it's a, a whole different story with uh, our second year over a billion dollars in our at, when you look at a TCV kind of calculation and us transforming into an ARR, a heavy perpetual base. So we've transitioned with new product offering being all subscription based. So that's uh, that's making us um, making us uh, even more competitive than, than we have been past. Well, I like how you couch that, Bill, right? Because you don't want to be trapped into that, you know, the, the quarterly shot clock, but still it's quite impressive performance. And with the ARR, that sort of smooths things out. Jim, I want to ask you about uh, uh, Veeamon. Uh, it's again, again, virtual this year, second year in a row. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been frustrating because we can't be face to face, but, but what have you learned about the, the sort of virtual events? How has it performed for you? Do you see that continuing in some way, shape or form when you get back to physical? How are you thinking about that? Yeah, we had, we had two major um, virtual events last year. And so to your point, we, we did learn a lot in terms of what works, uh, what doesn't work. And we've continued to refine, find, refine the plans. Uh, one thing that it does is it just really opens the doors for a much broader audience. Uh, typically we get about 2000 ish people uh, that attend in person for Vimon. Uh, and, uh, and last year we had actually about 28,000 people representing 150 countries uh, that registered uh, for the event. And we had uh, uh, over 11,000 that actually attended. Uh, and the engagement was was really good, and we we were our scores in terms of of satisfaction were you know four plus uh, out of five, uh, and so I think we did a pretty good job. But we continue to learn. One of the things that you, you need to do is you need to sort of shorten the agenda uh, because the attention span is not not very long. So all of our sessions are 30 minutes or less, and we've actually uh, um, put it over two days. 
uh, where it's uh, about three and a half hours each day. Uh, so we try to keep it a little bit lighter. We still have 30 uh, different breakout sessions. Uh, we have keynotes, um, uh, some great speakers that are coming, some great customers uh, that are coming, uh, but you have to integrate some fun, some incentives, things of that sort. So we've been creating a lot of buzz leading up to uh, Vmon uh, with um, a lot of social activity. Uh, we have some, some new uh, Veeam Nike kicks that people can win, which has generated a lot of uh, excitement. Uh, and, uh, and we'll be doing a lot of incentives and prizes and things uh, as a part of the event. Uh, so so that, that's a key learning that uh, we, we, we know that people love and just creates a, lo a lot of buzz in addition to, of course, the great content. Yeah. And Veeam has good swag too, as an analyst, I always appreciate that. Veeam and, and Pure Storage, has, has, well, you guys are like at the top well, we, of the we list. We take so care of you, Dave, for sure. That's pretty big, thanks for that. But I got to ask you, so, so one of the hard parts is, because you guys are all channel, 100% channel, have been from day zero. That's some, that's got to be tough because we've been in this business a long time, doing hybrid for a long time. And the sellers love to be belly to belly. They never wanted sort of hybrid. So it's got to be tougher for the partners as well, who are big, you know, channels. So how do you integrate the partners? What can we expect, you know, in, in these types of things going forward? Yeah, so, so I, I can start with just with Vmon, Bill, and then we can talk a little bit more. But uh, so for Vmon, we actually have a, a really strong uh, partner registration. Uh, so partners are attending Vmon as well. We have separate sort of cordoned off content uh, specifically for our partners. Uh, so they're definitely a, a key part of that. We have 38 uh, sponsors. Uh, that, um, uh, you know, a, a part of our ecosystem. Uh, and uh, so, you know, partners kind of overall are, are a really key part of Vmon in addition to, to customers attending as well. Uh, so that's one way that we continue to connect with, uh, with our partners. And Bill, that's part of the TAM expansion, obviously it's leverage, right? Absolutely it is. And it, you know, we'll stay with uh, that two tier distribution system that we have effectively with those partners and distributors as to how we work through them. Uh, partners are absolutely key, key for us all around the globe. Uh, different kinds of partners in the US, um, rather large ones, a lot of small ones, uh, same in EMEA and same in APJ. So we'll keep that network uh, going. Why? Because they're, they're an extension of the Veeam arm of our internal sales group that numbers well over 2000 of our uh, people that focus on the selling, but the partners are key. They've adapted nicely, I believe, to uh, a lot of virtual events like we're going through now. And they too sound like they're as excited as we are about getting things back in uh, in person. So I've so. I always been fascinated by TAM expansion. It's part of the CEO's job. You, ha you know, I love the fact that, that, that Insight, the board promoted from within somebody, they tapped a, new, a CEO who knew the business. You had to do a reset. Now you're at $5 billion valuation. Part of your job was to, you know, grow the business, grow the TAM, grow, grow, grow. That's, you know, the mantra. And so in thinking about your TAM expansion, cast an acquisition, mm -hmm. cloud, uh, uh, you guys have been into the SaaS uh, backup world for, for a bit now. It's starting to, to produce. How are you thinking about the future and the opportunities ahead? Yeah, we've got uh, great opportunities with Kasten, so into the Kubernetes space. That's a huge uh, uh, market expansion for us in an evolving marketplace. So our goal was let's be that thought leader, let's uh, get the best technology that's out there, and then you'll see us execute really well this uh, on the sales side this uh, this year also, in 2021 here and beyond. Uh, the public cloud piece with Azure, with AWS, with our Google offerings. So we're continuing to bring those up the up to up to speed in the sense of size because there's this tremendous future there. That's a big expansion of our TAM also. I think uh, Jim might talk a little bit about it jumping into that security space a little bit um, that is going to be big. It's big for us. It's a selling um, a selling feature that I think has come a long way. So it is about expanding that TAM and, it, and our focus is always long-term. It is, uh, yeah, the valuation is important, but more important is that, you know, that long-term customer service, uh, meaning new products for them like Office 365 that we brought out that has had tremendous growth for us. Uh, so uh, we're really excited about the growth. But uh, again, our focus is on for that customer over the long term. It's uh, it's years out. It's not uh, the quarters and it's not about that valuation. It's really about how we keep them going in their business. So Jim, talk about that positioning. I mean, you're not a security company. You're not like building, you know, firewalls and, and perimeters and so forth, but the notion of security and data protection plays in there. I mean, you think about these ransomware attacks. If I can actually recover from a, a ransomware attack, I got way, way more leverage and you're part of that recovery process. So those lines are blurring. How, how do you think about it? 
Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's definitely a key benefit uh, that our solution provides in terms of protection from that. Uh, and as we've had new releases into the market, uh, V10 last year, V11 this year, uh, we've continued to up the ante relative to uh, protection from ransomware. Uh, that's obviously a, a hot topic in the marketplace. And, uh, and, and we have some, some great differentiators that we've brought to market. And I think that that's part of why we're seeing the, you know, the strong growth uh, B11, you know, uh, focus on ransomware, but over 200 new features and capabilities that we have brought to market to make it easier for our customers. Uh, we have kind of three key pillars around uh, simplicity, flexibility, reliability, uh, and also just super powerful with the, the features and capabilities that we bring to market. Uh, so, uh, so we're seeing great traction there. Uh, and, uh, and that's definitely an area that we're focused on. Uh, as again, we're not a security company, but we do protect from that. And some of the capabilities, you know, give you, if you do run into that situation, uh, the capability to recover quickly and not have to pay a ransom and keep your business running, uh, which is a key focus uh, for us across all of our 400,000 plus customers. What about cloud? Cloud is a, you know, a lot of people, you know, that are traditionally on-prem vendors, they're like threatened by cloud, but, but cloud's a gift for Veeam. I mean, it's like the internet is a gift. It's this big platform that's been built out. You can build on top of it. So how are you guys thinking about, about the cloud opportunity and the SaaS uh, data protection? Yeah, Bill, yeah. you want to go and then I'll Yeah, yeah, in. absolutely, sorry, Jim. Yeah, I, it's, it is a tremendous uh, market opportunity for us. We've evolved, as you know, back, back to our roots in 06, it was about um, protecting those virtual workloads. And we've evolved from there with, evolved from there maintaining that, that on-prem business is, uh, is not going away. The public cloud business is skyrocketed, the private cloud business the same way. And we want to have products for all, um, all of those. And the ability to move and move data, move, move uh, workloads around, move those data around, move that data around. So big piece for us, the casting piece, I keep getting back to it, how that might evolve with a SaaS offering or not, we'll, we'll tell over time period here as we work on that product roadmap. So uh, absolutely tremendous opportunity for us. Well, when you think about hybrid, Jim, I mean, the first thing that, that people say is for developers, you know, in containers, first thing you do is containerize the app. And then you don't care where it runs, it can run anywhere, right at once, run it anywhere. And that's a big opportunity. Yeah, so so we're we're definitely focused on building a, a single platform for all environments. Uh, so with the storage integration, uh, with the the top three hyperscalers uh, uh, moving into Kubernetes and containers uh, uh, backup and protection. Uh, so that that's a key part of our strategy. It's again to make it easy for customers uh, to be able to manage all of their backup from one single console. Uh, so the, so that's a key strategy, and we're in. You know, the research that we've done, I think, you know, due to COVID, we're actually seeing an increase in the move to the cloud. Uh, and uh, we play in, in, in two key areas. One is with the hyperscalers and providing, you know, the, the backup and recovery uh, within those environments, but then also with our service providers. Uh, and as a service, uh, we're seeing really strong growth uh, within that market and that ecosystem. So, uh, you know, working to, to uh, partner with them uh, closely and continue to build that ecosystem and support them and their efforts to, to, uh, to drive growth in the market as well. All right, I'm going to let you guys go, but last question, Bill. Is, so what's life like with Insight? I know these guys are players. We've, we've seen the moves they make. Uh, is, is, what's the future like? Is, is IPO still on the table? What can you tell us about life with Insight? Uh, it's a great question. Well, keep in mind, we uh, worked with Insight in our prior entity uh, uh, starting in, I think in 2002, we brought them in. So, and uh, our partner that's on our account has been with us since that time, even though after we sold the business, they were out of Veeam. So uh, know them really well. They've been a, a big help. Their operations, uh, operationally efficient, efficiently focused. I'd say they're helping us bring uh, new ideas back to the M&A activity, back to your IPO question. I think that's an avenue for us we clearly are pushing in that direction to get set up that way. Uh, what's it do for us? It gives us that bigger currency versus uh, just cash. It gives you that stock currency to use on M&A activity that, you know, I think you have you saw us do that with uh, Kasten uh, in the sense of acquiring M&A. That's been different for Veeam. We build it from within. That was a buy from outside. You'll see us uh, do both, both of those in the future. Very important. I think, um, uh, you, you know, without being too predictive, I would say hopefully that's something you see in the IPO side that in the next uh, 12, 24 months, uh, a run like that. Well, 
hey, as, uh, and as an upside observer, observer, the street wants growth, they want execution, they want Man. consistency, and you guys bring all those. So guys, thanks so much for coming back in theCUBE. Always a pleasure and look forward to seeing you face to face, hopefully before 22. Uh, it would be nice. <laughs> all right, thank you, Dave. Thanks, right. Dave. All right. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE's continuous coverage of VeeamOn 2021, the virtual edition. We'll be right back.